So once that, I think, became known to the press in general, everybody changed. And then they were like, what's going on here? And so I think the problem was that initially a lot of people in the press, they just run with the story and they don't even ask um, basic questions. The, I mean, the first allegation to, to get even a, a receiver in, they say, oh, a billion dollars is missing. We have no idea where it went. And it's just a joke. I mean, how can you get a billion dollars out of a bank and nobody knows? I mean, you have to rob it, you know, or you, there's a withdrawal slip, or you wire it. There, there's no such thing. It just vanishes. And um, so when people start looking at this and saying, you know, what's going on? I mean, even in the Madoff case, they, they were able to trace every wire. Um, so it, it just really became more bizarre as it went and um, so there were other people that were trying to they were interested in doing a movie but they were American okay. so my experience with the press was that the, uh, the US government is very influential and they control a lot um, Gretchen Morganson had put me on the front page of the New York Times and said, what's going on in this case? And uh, in court, they, the judge says, oh, she doesn't know what she, she was talking about. And the government, oh, yes, that's right. And that's it. And then somebody picks up the phone and obviously calls the New York Times, and she wasn't allowed to write about me again. Uh, from Bloomberg, we used to publish on Bloomberg. I've been erased from all their terminals. You put my name in, it doesn't show up. Uh, there's lists of, of all the biggest frauds and whatever. I'm never listed. It's like I've disappeared from everything. And uh, then when I was actually in prison, there was a guy named Steve Bumbaka, who was, uh, I think he was like the number two guy at the New York Post. And they put him in prison for supposedly hiring people that didn't really show up to work. And when he came in, I was running the library at the time, and he said, uh, came up to me and he says, Jay, I just wanted to thank you. Every time we put you on the front page, we always sold 50,000 more papers. And it was just a joke. I was, yeah, I was, I'm glad I helped you out, you know. <laughs> and then he told me, he says, the way it really works. Uh, he says, the government will pick up the phone and they'll say, we have a favor do this or do that, kill the story, whatever. And so you either do what they tell you to do or you don't. If you don't, they come after you personally. And that's what they did to him. So after seeing what they did to, um, to Gretchen, what he told me, uh, there was a journalist at, at Bloomberg, uh, Mark Pittman, who wrote a story about what we were doing in Japan beforehand. Uh, we were buying portfolios and bailing companies out, and um, we were not managing their money. They didn't have money to manage. They were all bleeding out of their eye sockets at that time. And when it began, um, Mark said, you know, this is ridiculous. You, you were not managing money. He says, we're not going to let them do this to you, Marty. I said, okay, you know, great. And then they, Bloomberg removed him. He wasn't allowed to write. But before they did that, I actually did a interview. I was on Bloomberg Radio from inside prison. And the, the pictures have survived. There's, you'll see me in a brown jumpsuit. That was that interview. But that interview's disappeared. Everything has disappeared. And then Mark Pittman was not allowed to, uh, to cover me again. So obviously somebody in the government picks up the phone and says, knock this stuff off. So when the Americans wanted to do the film, I said, you know, you might be honest, you might be sincere, but I do all this, and how do I know somebody doesn't pick up the phone and, and kill it? So that's why I said, no, who's the German guy? Because <laughs> um, honestly, you know, why did Snowden go to The Guardian? Because if he would have showed up at the New York Times and said, look, I stole all these papers from the NSA, they would say, gee, would you like a cup of coffee? You know, are you okay while they're waiting for the NSA to come get them? Uh, it's just not going to happen. 
so I understood that. I didn't want to, you know, have anything to do with an American journalist. Even though he, you know, the person might be okay, it, who knows what's going to happen. So that's why I said, all right, fine. Um, and I, I told him, if you're willing to actually tell the truth about the banks, all right. And so we agreed on that. I said, all right, fine. 